Hey guys, hi, welcome back once again. My name is Vaishali and today I'd like to talk about the difference between codependency and interdependency. So what is codependency or who is a codependent? In my understanding, almost all of us are codependents in some way or the other. So codependency essentially means excessive emotional or psychological reliance on a partner or on people essentially to take care of our needs. So earlier the term codependency was essentially applied to addicts who needed to be taken care of by somebody else, who could not rely on themselves to take care of themselves. But since everything about life is about evolution, the term codependency has also evolved. So the term codependency also means having fears of abandonment or excessive need of the approval of others, having unhealthy dependence on relationships even at the cost of one's own well-being. It also encompasses having an exaggerated sense of responsibility for the actions of others. Now as children, as babies, as infants, we all are codependent on our caretakers even for our basic survival. As infants, as babies, we really cannot take care of ourselves and we end up crying for help most of the times. But what happens when those needs are not met or are neglected, either consciously or unconsciously? We learn to adapt. We learn some coping mechanisms which are helpful at that point in time, but maybe with time, they may not necessarily be that helpful. So like a coin that has two sides, even codependency has two sides to it. And it looks something like this. There are the over-empowered codependents who kind of come across as being too independent. They are the ones who do most of the things. They are the takeovers. They are the ones who take over every responsibility. They are the ones who make most of the decisions for themselves and for the others. They are the ones who like to wear the responsibility hat even when they go off to sleep. They are also the ones who portray and project themselves to be the martyrs but in a superior way. They are the self-sacrificing lamb who kind of sacrifice themselves over and over again while they are trying to shoulder the responsibility of themselves and of the others. Others who are equally grown up in their relationships and in their associations. Now let's remind ourselves over here that kids are codependent on their caretakers to take care of their basic needs. The codependents are also the ones who have a sense of self-importance that others may fall apart or things may fall apart if they are not there, if they are not the ones who shoulder on the responsibility because others quite naturally cannot do so, even when the other is a grown-up. They are also the ones who like to give advice even when it's not asked for. And most of us, including myself at times, fall in this category. They are also the ones who would want to change the others. For it is according to them that the other is not shouldering the responsibility as much as they are. And just like the other side of the coin, there are the other kinds of codependence as well. These are the ones who have difficulty saying no. These are the ones who have difficulty establishing their boundaries, establishing their negotiables and their non-negotiables. These are the ones who want others to like them constantly. These are the ones who also seek approval of the others constantly for the fear of being abandoned. Now, just like the others, they also have a need to be needed because the other seemingly empowered codependent has the need to be needed so that they can carry on as being perceived as the responsible for themselves and for the others. And quite naturally so, the empowered codependent then attracts the underpowered, the disadvantaged codependent towards themselves. The seemingly underpowered codependent also has difficulty voicing their opinions, which makes me think of the concept that we so commonly use when we are talking about a couple in a relationship, which is about the existence of the better half, somewhere giving us the message that we are not whole as an individual, somewhere giving us the message that we need another half 
to feel whole about ourselves. And just like a tree that grows and evolves through a seed, our childhood, which is our foundation and our formative years, are never left behind. We always carry them forward. Our adult version is just an extension of those formative foundation years. And many a times through most of our lives, we keep playing and replaying these codependent mechanisms, either in seemingly empowered or disempowered ways. It's only when we get aware about it and do we really want to change it, can we start talking about interdependency. An interdependent relationship is essentially the one wherein two people recognize their wholeness, their completeness as human beings within their own selves without forgetting to acknowledge that it's human to err, and yet our errs or our errors, just as a result of being humans, do not make us less whole. The two interdependent people are also able to talk about their negotiables and their non-negotiables. They are able to acknowledge their differences, their uniqueness, their unique perspectives, and they choose to integrate it or even not at that point in time. The two interdependent people do not rely on the other to give them a sense of completeness. And yet they realize that it is their shared differences and their similarities that makes their shared experience more enriching. The interdependent relationships not only work on agreements, but they also work in the context of agreeing to disagree. The interdependent relationships allow for more growth opportunities. The interdependent relationships are also growth oriented and by nature are not clingy. And unless we recognize our own codependent patterns, which many of us do have, we really cannot work towards having interdependent relationships. Because growth on both intrapersonal and interpersonal levels does not happen without some discomfort. It doesn't necessarily happen without disrupting something to evolve into something better. So let's try and figure out our own codependencies so that we can then veneer and lean into creating and co-creating interdependent relationships. Let's try and reflect on our own patterns if we want to bring some change into our lives, some change into our codependent patterns, some change into becoming and feeling whole within ourselves. Let's try and do that for ourselves and I will see you once again the next week. Till then, stay tuned in. And guys, if you do like the contents of my videos, please do like, share and subscribe.